Well, another one. Whiskey, oh hey doggy, hey dog, oh angel. Welcome to Whiskey Fireside Chat number 52, I think. The last one, yes that's right, 51, was uh, kind of talking about one of my uh, canoe buddies, uh, tripping buddies, winter camping buddies, uh, Tim Foley, and did a little special on him. And then I thought, hey, I'm gonna do another one. Another special person. Are you right? Are you okay? You're such a sucky dog. First, the whiskey. Drambuie. Oh, the male person must be here. He's I'm fighting a cold. That's <laughs> what my mother used to give us when we we're, when were sick when we were kids. <laughs> oh, yep, tastes like cough syrup. So, uh, Andy Baxter. Uh, Andy has gone tripping with me, winter camping with me for years. Gosh, well over 20 years. He was my old neighbor. Um, I don't live there anymore, but he showed up once, uh, moved all his canoes in. I went and had a shot with him, and then next thing you know, we're out paddling near James Bay for a month together. So, uh, yeah, we've done a lot of great trips. What I like about Andy, uh, yes, he's knowledgeable, very skilled, uh, extremely skilled person, very safe person, uh, very uh, mystical person, very spiritual person, very deep meaning, very ethical person, uh, but also funny as Red Skelton. <laughs> He's the Red Skelton of the canoe world, he really is. And what I love about him is that we always enjoy ourselves out there. We always laugh and giggle because he said we can't complain because it's our choice to be out there. So I put some stuff together. Hold on, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Here's Mr. Baxter. I'm cold. <laughs> Where's the wood? Uh, we got another pile inside, and uh, I don't know. You think we got enough wood for the night? <laughs> I need more wood. I'm going in. You get more wood. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> more wood. More wood. It's like night and day. <laughs> it's chilly out there. And it's toasty in here. Uh, I'm getting uh, naked. <laughs> oh, great. And the nice thing is we, we got chili for dinner. Right, Andy? More wood. Uh, it's got four legs. Is it a dog? <laughs> but uh, how do you tell the difference between a dog and a wolf? Good doggy. <laughs> hey, Andy. Huh? Can you put uh, some ice in my drink? You want ice in your drink? Yeah, that'd be nice. Where am I gonna get ice in a place like this? I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. I think I know. No! <laughs> it wasn't yellow, was it? Looking at Andy's uh, liners and they're gold. <laughs> We're not sure why. Were they Were they on sale? No, the, those are the most expensive ones. That's solid gold. <laughs> That's Gold keeps your feet warm. I'm uh, pumping up my air mattress. Don't try this at home. <laughs> People might think you're weird. Mm, downy comfort. Mm. I'm alive! You look like you're one of Robin Hood's men. <laughs> <laughs> We're knights of the round table. Oh Just like mom used to make. Did your mom actually make bacon? <laughs> Strictly kosher kitchen. Yeah. They're killer chickadees. You gotta watch them in the winter. They look so mild mannered, and all of a sudden, <laughs> they turn vicious. Mm. I'm afraid to blink. <laughs> My eyelashes will freeze together. I'm cold. <sighs> Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine that at me. There you go. Don't try that at home. Kevin pissed off the pilot and now he's getting the external seat. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Kevin, you're going to be fulfilling the role of plain steward, okay? So keep the cocktails coming and we'll be good to go. Um, I, uh, I have no independent recollection of that event. So uh, what are you doing, Andy? Well, um, out of respect and reverence for these uh, ancient and and spiritual sites, um, the tradition 
amongst the First Nations was to leave an offering of tobacco or something valuable. And uh, so we brought some tobacco to uh, leave here also uh, out of respect for their culture. And, uh, and this exceptionally uh, significant and special site. Uh, could you have uh, give me your version of what happened uh, back on the other portage with Ann and Bill? Oh, Ann, uh, Ann, Ann saved every, everything. It was like there was a canoe and then the water and then wobbling and then water coming in the canoe and then Ann picked the whole thing up in her arms and just drained the water out and gently set it back. But she got her knickers wet in the process. Yeah, that was a good move, Kevin. Uh, should we go over and help? Or should we film this? We helped. Good job, Kevin. Okay. So what's going on, Annie? Well, we were running from a rabid bear. So we, we came over a small portage up over a ridge. When we landed, though, uh, Kevin uh, saw uh, a bear in a tree, and then the tree started to fall, and the bear came scrambling down, and... Kevin, uh, I think he was in the middle of hanging a leak and his pants fell down. He started running with his trousers around his ankles. It was mass hysteria, pandemonium. My country has lots of explorers. It does. <laughs> Ones who have gone before us, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yes, intrepid canoe trippers. Yeah. Where are we headed? Just up a little portage. You have to watch or your feet might get wet in in some of the, you know, goopy places. So be careful where you step. Was that Bailey's? It says Bailey's on this part of the label. You can't read this part of the label for copyright purposes but you can see somebody's been swilling on this fine bottle already Andy we, we have another rainbow double rainbow all the way wow solstice is a really big deal because it is the longest day of the year we're trying to remember what pagan rituals go with this type of celebration we're gonna have to put our thinking hats on and figure it out <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet, Ed. <laughs> well, should it, we the continue with started. the ritual? <laughs> you better turn that off. <laughs> what is that, Andy? It's a. Uh, it's a either a portage marker or some kind of voodoo. <laughs> That's bizarre. Uh, Mr. Baxter, what's going on at this point? You are in the process of catching me dinner. <laughs> I want a walleye. Mr. Bax is all whiny because he, he didn't catch a walleye to eat. He, he doesn't want a lake trout. He's lake trout as good as walleye. I'll have it all myself then. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rumbly in my tumbly for walleye. What did you say? I said you caught me in my curlers. Oh, I'm doing the dishes. <laughs> I got my fuzzy slippers on. <laughs> uh, how was your day today, Mr. Baxter? You never take me anywhere anymore. Well, in Caribou. Made you look. <laughs> <laughs> we have yet to see a Woodland Caribou. I had everybody looking. <laughs> and speaking of uh, poop, though, we also saw some wolf poop today. That was record size. <laughs> <laughs> We're phoning Guinness. Holy <laughs> jumping. This, there was a wolf, you know, I think, you know, and, and I think Bill summed it up uh, the best when he said, well, that explains why they howl. <laughs> this thing was huge. <laughs> it was, there was hair, with well, moose hair, and I think there was even a, a moose leg coming out of it. I don't know. It was, oh. oh, yeah. Yeah. So bad. I think I saw a piece of Jimmy Hoffa yeah. in there. No, saw there the, is a willing caribou. Dog. As your grandma would say, fool me once, 
Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Well, one another? I think it's time. All right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I'm set for the winter. This is a it's a canvas anorak that uh, Lurla North made me, and basically you pull it over for the wind going across the lake, and it keeps you nice and uh, uh, warm, and then you can breathe through it. And uh, you're not looking as good. <laughs> Just because I got a couple buttons missing, he's like making fun of me now. And you got rubber boots, and I got mukluks. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't care. You're still walking behind. <laughs> Come on! I'll, I'll make it look used. I'll rub up, rub some charcoal over me or something like that. No, Wait up for me! It. Wait up! Wait up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fresh water! We hit the sewer line! Well, I, I'm going to try something I've never done before camping. And uh, I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm going to try and make some ice. So we've got nice ice for our drinks. Where's the, where's the freezer, Kevin? We'll come back and give you an update later. Kevin's guaranteed us that he will stay up all night feeding the fire. And, oh, wait a minute. I think he was shaking his head. Does, does this mean... Oh, this is why I like going with you. You have a weak bladder. So I know <laughs> you're going to have to get up. Yeah. He knows that when I get up to pee, I throw some logs on the fire. And Kevin's like, ah. Oh. I love it. <laughs> Do you love me for me or just my bladder? Is it a cool wine if it says ladies night out? Are you okay with eating broccoli in the tent in some closed area? Um, just as long as no one pulls my finger. So, uh, hey dad, how's it going? Uh, didn't know if you could make it out to the game tonight. Uh, it's just a scrimmage, so it's nothing too wild, but um, what I'm going to do is ask my buddy to tape some of it at least so you can watch me uh, make a fool of myself and then you can wear your own uh, paper bag over your head in shame. I'm not wearing your fans though. Oh. Yeah. Some woman said, uh, aren't you filming Andy on a canoe trip? I said, actually, I'm, I'm filming him uh, playing goal. And she goes, really? He's out there? <laughs> True story. <laughs> Liar. This is Fletcher's Christmas present. Right? One of them. Yeah. So I think it was uh, the Federated Health Campaign, mm -hmm. um, which is a group of charities that uh, all are health related, uh, cancer, you know, colon, kidneys, all sorts of different research and um they banded together and have this group charity there's about 15 17 of them are in there and anyway we we held a silent auction of a wilderness uh excursion with uh hosted by kevin callen and and myself and did dad know about this no he i i thought it would be <laughs> better if it was a surprise say no to pot we get it because it's a pot and it's a lobster lobster and just one of them pot it also has a meaning to say no to pot Good. i thought it was pretty clever Pardon? so uh what do you think of uh my 13 year old going on this trip with us she's very brave she's um incredibly brave and tolerant and patient and a little wacky but she comes by that honestly not not to mention any names and look I even have like this handy dandy blow up tool thing that oh my oh my <laughs> oh see if you need to get get it up fast you just start working this baby <laughs> that's just wrong 
I got I got Kyla confirmed to the Catholic Church only for for one reason. So when we're on a canoe trip, mm -hmm. she can pray harder, uh, harder, longer, faster, effective holiness, and say, and say bad words, and seek forgiveness later. I don't know. But what was the voice? I can't remember. What did I say? There were some Irish. Uh, curse words. Oh, that yes. So that yes, that means she can officially say things like "Sweet Jesus" and and "Jesus Murphy" and "For the love of God," that that sort of stuff. It's all Yay! now on her vocabulary. Oh, Mary! Have you been teaching her some things on this trip? <sighs> Uh, clearly not. <laughs> I know, it's speechless. I'm that's a, that's um, a good cause for, reason really, for hearing loss. <laughs> Mr. Baxter, what were we talking about, um, what, what to do if one of the boys uh, lights on fire? Well, stop farting immediately, because that just builds the fire bigger. And then uh, you have to run around in circles, waving your arms, because uh, that's the SpongeBob method of dealing with that situation. <laughs> I learned that on TV. So what are you two girls up to? Well, we did our makeup. And yeah! Our, and our hair. And I put a little rouge on my friend's cheek here, as you can see. Looks like a bug bite. <laughs> Well, let's bush rouge. <laughs> Kyla um, has many personalities, so this might not necessarily be Kyla. We might have Crazy Ken. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> it's Crazy Ken. <laughs> wow! So, if we, um, if we do the interview long enough and keep snacking, we can eat all Mr. Callan's uh, you know, oh, boring. that's the plan! <laughs> <laughs> like, how heavy is your pack? Is Enough it? to kill your shoulder blades. Oh, so you had a monster pack on. Pretty much, yeah. Now your shoulder blades are, are shot. Yeah. Done. Yeah. No more. Yeah. Is this your last canoe trip? No. Right on. We're paddling a week before Christmas. Thanks to climate change, oh dear. Oh, well, we, we gotta go flip the canoe because we're worried about it filling with snow. So we're gonna go off into the snowstorm to fill, to flip the canoe. It's like, it's like Rudolph when he goes off with Cornelius or whatever his name is. He looks for gold. He's like, nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy jumping. Andy, are we gonna get out of here? We have a situation. <laughs> Oh, we found the canoe! We're good! Oh, it's full! <laughs> it's snow in it! <laughs> Oops. Good thing we decided to flip the boat. Yeah, we should have flipped the boat earlier, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Oh, you look like Santa Claus. Santi! We got the, the fire going. Mm -hmm. The weather outside is frightful, but the fire is just delightful. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, my lord, we'll never get out alive. <laughs> Don't you know? Hey, the lake's not frozen. That's good. That's a good thing because we came here by canoe. <laughs> December 19th. Look at this. So, Merry Christmas. Thanks for getting me lawn johns for Christmas. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Except for I didn't really. You just stole them out of my pack. <laughs> we should have stayed warm in the tent. Oh dear, now we're in a snowstorm. <laughs> what are you doing, Andy? I'm portaging. Winter style. I've heard of people who can actually go number two in the woods and use 
snow yes. instead of toilet paper. Is that true? That is true. Yes, it's quite refreshing actually. So, um, is there a particular shape? Yes, yes. You definitely want a cylinder, of, or no, sorry, circular, like a hockey puck. Okay. And then you can actually use it more than once. So you wipe, rotate, right? Rotate. You oh, don't... so you're using the edge of the hockey yes. puck. Not yeah. the flat surfaces. No, no, okay. that, would, that would be very difficult unless you had very wide. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, these are all tips that are useful to new people like me, right? Yes, yes. So, would you recommend, like, um, <laughs> getting four or five snowballs already? That's a good point. That's yeah. a very excellent point, yes. Pre-making your snowballs is key. Have them lined up, mm -hmm. ready to be used. Yeah. And, then, and then, once you're done with your snowball, you just chuck it behind you so that uh, you don't have, you don't mistake it for... A fresh snow. Oh, snow yeah. Ball. Yeah, or like a wagon wheel or something <laughs> like that. Yes. Now, is this, is it, um, now, this may be a bit of a personal question. Uh, being inexperienced in, in being a, a woman, I, 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 uh, I but You don't I, wear makeup like Kevin? Not as much, um, and not as often. But, uh, so, would you use the snow, um, you know, uh, wipes on both uh, parts of your anatomy. For me personally, I just like the shake and go. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, like a just like a male, but I might shake a little bit longer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So all right. So it's um, kind of like a a, a uh, an osprey that's uh, dove into the ah. water and uh, comes up <laughs> about ten feet. A little shake. Yeah, off, off, you, off go. you go. Yeah, just like an off a full, a full body shake sort of thing. Is this kind of like a hula girlish on the dashboard or, you know? No, it's a little more aggressive, like a, like an otter out of the water. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Great. Thank you. <laughs> nice chatting with you. I uh, wore the white shirt, so if I fell in the snow... People would find me easier. I'm not sure if it's going to work out, though. All right, <laughs> Mr. Baxter, what do you got to say? We're uh, we're about to, uh, to uh, reach the final summit. <laughs> Where's the oxygen? <laughs> no, it's been um, surprisingly uphill so far. <laughs> they uh, they told me we were going to Silver Mountain, and I didn't expect the um, the uphill part so uh, obviously I, I didn't do enough research uh, uh, but um, I'm happy to hear there's a little downhill section coming which I'm yes. thinking is that the pit of hell or um, you know before we make the final ascent so okay we're good <laughs> so I um, I was thinking about a, a great winter getaway holiday and uh, and then uh, you know I suggested to my wife what about maybe Cuba this year and uh, she seemed like she was interested and until she found this great deal online so cheers everyone Trust us. Alright, have a good time. Bye bye! See you in the morning! <laughs>
It's gonna be a long night. Hey, look, I got some wood. Where'd you get that? What? Where'd you get that? There's an old boat back there. <laughs> this is good wood. Okay, okay, but we need some fire starter. Oh, okay, I'll yep. be right back. Yep. Now you do know if you're summer camping and you're walking around with a single malt in your hand, that would be wrong. Yeah, or winter camping, it would be wrong too. Because we're having tea, yes. <laughs> I'm hoping mine cools down soon. <laughs> oh, oh, I burnt my lip. <laughs> Silent Lake, New Year's Eve, in a snowstorm, drinking tea on the trail. Tea on the trail, remember. If you're drinking tea, don't drive. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's good scotch. No, Sharon Creek. Sharon. Oh, Sharon Creek Conservation Area along the Thames River, is it? Where are we? Where are we, Andy? Close Gallimore. to the Thames River. Is it? Yeah. All right, and what's going on, Sarah? Um, we've organized a paddle day for Syrian refugees, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. That's, so why did you do that? Uh, basically, we thought it would be a good idea to sort of welcome them into the community. Uh, now that it's summer, it's paddling season, we thought it would be a nice way to share a bit of Canadian culture with them. They can teach us a little bit about their culture. It's just going to be a nice time. Andy, did you know that? Well, I, uh, I came prepared for anything. <laughs> except for going on the water. Should I have gotten a life jacket? No, no, there's no need to show them that we need to wear a life jacket. <laughs> Well, it's just my luck to have the watch with nothing left to do. To watch the deadly waters roll as I go north to the Sioux. I want some bubblegum. Bubblegum, bubblegum, bubblegum. I said, all right. I said, okay. So are you are you alright about the day, Andy? It's fantastic. Yeah. It's uh it's time to eat. It's time to eat. Yeah. I'm putting the camera away. Okay. Where are we, Andy? We're in heaven. Who is the the one person that inspired you to go outdoors when you were growing up? Hmm. It was probably my parents because every they very regularly inspired me to go outdoors when they said get your ass out of bed and go to school and you're walking again so um that was probably my first out of doors experience hey i just met you and this could be crazy going all the way upstream with Kevin Callen. Note, no portaging. And so it's kind of the counterpoint to all that portaging we did uh, running around Algonquin Park the other year. So this year, no portaging, just floating and admiring the bears. Now early morning, it's a nice calm, making the, the crossing. Uh, the only thing that's happening in a bad way this morning is Andy's got some weird song in his, in his head. I just want to sing. It's only three days in the boat with no portages. I'm guessing by day five we'll both be loony and singing weird songs. Just get through the day. If you ask any girl in the parish around what pleases her most from her head to her toes, she'll say, I'm not sure that's business of yours, but I sure like to waltz with the log drivers. I love your hair. I, I just got it done. My, uh, my, uh, my bride calls it canoe hair. And I'm not exactly sure what it might be, but it's obviously associated with a canoe trip, so. I think they're teenage sandhill cranes, and they've come to this island next door as their parking spot. This is what they look like. That's churning the butter. <laughs> Is that what what your wife uh, found attractive 
Uh, well, I think it was primarily my dancing skills that uh, drew my bride to me. And then she whispered in my ear, Don't dance like that. You'll look like an idiot. <laughs> she has so much sense. Love you, honey. <laughs> this one's for all you non-conformists out there. <laughs> That's right. Power to the rebels. Our oh, mateys. Um, uh, were you upset that I didn't catch any fish today? Were you? It cried like a baby. Yes. Because you always, you know, catch and and gather and sustain me with your excellent fishing skills. So this this came to a shock. And you know. Let's be thankful that that fish is still there for, for some other angler who maybe isn't as skilled as you, Kevin. I'm hot. How far was the lake? Not as hot as you, Mr. Callan, but <laughs> I meant temperature-wise. Andy, uh, you still have your jammies on. I do. I'm very comfortable and I'm, you can't make me get out of them. Does my hair look okay? Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> when Kevin said, you know, I, I should put uh, wood underneath the, the stove so it doesn't sink in, I said, don't worry about it. We'll be fine. Just get it started. I'm cold. <laughs> now, uh, I'm kind of regretting that. <laughs> oh, well. Yes, folks, always put uh, wood underneath your stove to, to brace it when everything melts underneath it. Andy, we've got some river wildlife happening. <laughs> That's, this is river wildlife, southern Ontario style. <laughs> Andy, were you a little nervous when those German shepherds came running out at us? <laughs> the dogs are back. I told them that that uh, they wouldn't want me, but to make sure, I put a hot dog down your back of your coat. <laughs> They're going to eat anybody. It's going to be you. <laughs> what happened? Water's a little stiffer over on that side. This is this is kind of spooky. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Andy! <laughs> That was a nice surprise. And he's joining me on the trip. <laughs> I haven't tripped with him for a while. So yeah, he got some time off work and hey, hey Kevin, can I join you? It's fantastic. Remember, everyone must wear a life jacket when on the water park. We get to play on the water park? Yes. <laughs> See that one there? Yeah. It kind of looks like a male. A male. Private thing. Oh. <laughs> it does. Doesn't it? Yes. Everything looks like that to you, Kevin. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> I don't think we're in the wilderness anymore, Andy. <laughs> I was just about to get naked. <laughs> so, we're in town now. Uh, pop, ice cream, or beer? Yes. <laughs> it's 50 plus. That means I'm, I'm 50 plus, right? Is that what it means? Yeah, it was on sale because you. it's for seniors. Because I'm senior. <laughs> I really do feel like you're going to go over. <laughs> One of these containers is essential to survival in the wilderness. Otherwise, you may die a horrible, 
unsatisfactory tripping experience death. And that is beer. If you find yourself a beer along the way, a cold beer, no less, then life is going to be wonderful. That's not the container I was talking about. <laughs> There's another one. Oh, this container? Yeah. I don't know why it's beside you, but... That container is a mystery container. And some people wonder what this container is about. Others will know that to get through the night successfully, peacefully, without getting bug bitten, a container like this is key. It's a pee bottle. <laughs> I'm, I'm not knocking your age, buddy, but if you have a beer and a pee bottle beside you, well, you're <laughs> I can't hold the camera steady. <laughs> <laughs>